We've all heard about the famous direct action organisations like CAG and Development Group, and even the more recently surfaced intelligence support activity, and we know how prolific the Special Activity Centre has been. But with all the US departments fighting for budget, which typically comes from capabilities, could there be other organisations like these we've never heard of? Where would they be attached to, and what could they be doing? What acts of heroism have they committed? What threats to national security might they have stopped? One organisation which could house such a unit might be the Defence Intelligence Agency. The Defence Intelligence Agency, or the DIA, is a national level intelligence organisation that does not belong to a single military element or within the traditional chain of command, instead answering to the Secretary of Defence, directly through the Under Secretary of Defence for Intelligence. The DIA focuses on national level military defence topics and is officially designated as a combat support agency, meaning it has special responsibilities in meeting intelligence requirements specifically for the Secretary of Defence, the Joint Chiefs of Staff and combatant commanders, both in peace and at war. I step into this role as the 22nd Director of DIA with full humility, knowing what is at stake but also with confidence. Together we are capable of meeting any challenge. This differs to the CIA, which is concentrated on broader, more general civilian intelligence needs of the President and Cabinet. The DIA conducts clandestine espionage activities around the world as the executive agent for human intelligence operations and is responsible for executing cover programs for agency intelligence officers, as well as those for the entire Department of Defence. It also manages and conducts overt human intelligence collection activities, gathering and analysing measurement and signature intelligence, which is a technical intelligence discipline that serves to detect, track, identify or describe the signatures of fixed or dynamic target sources. The DIA is organised into four directorates, Directorate for Operations, Directorate for Analysis, Directorate for Science and Technology and the Directorate for Mission Services, organised over five regional centres. Within the Directorate for Operations there are three sub-agencies, the Defence Clandestine Service, Defence Attaché System and the Defence Cover Office. The Defence Clandestine Service is the agency which holds the human intelligence officers, interrogation experts, linguists and analysts which it sends overseas to conduct clandestine operations. It can, like the CIA, call upon special forces to assist in this, though we know that the CIA predominantly uses its Special Activities Centre personnel for the majority of these tasks. The DIA budget lives within the military intelligence budget. However, unlike the CIA, the amount it receives is classified. Though the military intelligence budget for 2023 was $27.9 billion, compared to the CIA's official $3.2 billion budget, the DIA might have a huge amount more disposable income. The key here then is that based on the description of the DIA's operational remit, it sounds very similar, albeit with a different target and reporting structure, to the CIA, who as we know, had their own direct action element. So. Could there be a direct action element living within the DIA which is yet to emerge? The need for a direct action element would come with similar reasons as to why the CIA have the Special Activities Centre. There are times where clandestine methods can only get you so far, and a degree of force might be needed. One of the roles this action arm might be tasked with then could be operational security, such as if a clandestine officer needs to visit an unsafe location. The officer needs security, and this security needs not only be maintained, but if needed, enforced. So a team of operators need to be on staff and tasked with that role. What if an intelligence meet goes wrong and an officer is kidnapped or captured in an obscure location? This would need boots on the ground with a specific skill set, almost a supporting role in an intelligence world but a role required nonetheless. But like the Special Activity Centre, perhaps there is also a need once intelligence is gathered on a threatening subject that a more traditional military mission of target elimination is required, a very similar profile to the Special Activity Centre. These roles could be farmed out to special forces or other special mission units, but budget is allocated based on capability and reputation in the intelligence world is important. Perhaps the DIA would want the ability to clean up their own messes when they make them, therefore needing their own action elements. The DIA and CIA's intelligence officers both attend the farm, the famous CIA operated training house for clandestine skills. As we know, there is a rigorous training program for paramilitary operations officers in the CIA which teaches and tests all kinds of operator skills such as firearms capability, lockpicking, SEER, cyber security and many more. So could it be that the DIA also taps in to the CIA run direct action training school for its own action elements needs? We know that the Special Activity Centre recruits almost entirely from the military 
even though it is a civilian staffed foreign intelligence organisation. The DIA's military intelligence gathering remit would suggest having staff with the look and feel of military personnel could be very important. It would also be able to recruit directly from within the military, so could potentially get the cream of the crop, as applicants wouldn't need to leave the military to serve. It could be entirely possible then that a mirror organisation to the Special Activities Centre's paramilitary operations officers exist within the Defence Intelligence Agency. We provide global presence for the Department of Defense. Not only are we present in those places, but we ensure DIA is present. The DIA operates out of every embassy in the world when required, so there must be a huge amount of intelligence and related activities that it conducts. The closeness of tasks between the DIA and the CIA seem like they could, or should, have their own direct action arm. If they do, what exploits could they have been involved with? What stories are out there yet to be heard? What do you think? Could there be other direct action units out there we don't know about? Where are they? Let me know in the comments.